The Obama administration's unveiled plans to boost government regulation over the financial system. On Thursday, Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner outlined proposals, including expanding federal oversight for the first time to cover financial derivatives trading, large head funds, hedge funds, and insurers such as AIG. Regulators would also impose uniform standards to limit the range of functions of major financial firms, including banks. Speaking before the House Financial Services Committee, Geithner said the changes were prompted by the failure of the economic system to regulate excess and greed. Our system failed in basic fundamental ways. Compensation practices rewarded short-term profits over long-term return. Pervasive failures in consumer protection left many Americans with obligations they did not understand and could not sustain. The huge apparent returns to financial activity attracted fraud on a dramatic scale. Market discipline failed to constrain dangerous levels of risk-taking throughout the system. The new rules come on top of previously announced proposals for government authority to seize troubled non-banking financial firms. President Obama is expected to promote the plan in meetings with top Wall Street bankers later today. We'll have more on this story after headlines with James Galbraith. The insurance giant AIG is facing new congressional and legal scrutiny over how it funneled tens of billions of dollars in taxpayer bailout money to banks facing huge losses that AIG had insured. In what some have called the backdoor bailout, AIG gave nearly $13 billion to Goldman Sachs and tens of billions more to other firms, including Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, J.P. Morgan Chase, Morgan Stanley, and several foreign banks. On Thursday, 26 House Democrats signed a letter by Congressmember Elijah Cummings asking the bailout program's inspector general to investigate the payments. Meanwhile, New York State Attorney General Andrew Cuomo subpoenaed AIG for information related to the derivatives payments funneled to the banks. President Obama is expected to unveil today a major expansion of U.S. military efforts in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Following a two-month review, Obama will reportedly order an additional 4,000 troops to Afghanistan on top of the 17,000 new combat troops authorized last month. The Washington Post reports Obama's plan will require a 60 percent increase to the $2 billion in monthly U.S. military costs in Afghanistan. Administration officials also say they'll impose new benchmarks on their allies in the Afghan and Pakistani governments. The plan will also reportedly include reconciliation efforts aimed at low-level Taliban fighters while shunning top leaders. On Thursday, National Intelligence Director Dennis Blair estimated some two-third of pro-Taliban groups are motivated by basic concerns such as inadequate water supplies or access to education. Meanwhile, in Pakistan, at least 48 people were killed, dozens more wounded in a suicide attack on a mosque earlier today. The bombing came in the town of Jamrud, near Pakistan's border with Afghanistan. In Iraq, 16 people were killed, another 45 wounded Thursday in a car bombing in northeast Baghdad. It was the fifth major bombing attack to hit Iraq this month. U.S. officials have confirmed Israel was behind a deadly airstrike that killed dozens of people in Sudan this past January. The U.S. says Israel attacked a convoy of 17 trucks suspected of carrying weapons intended for smuggling into the Gaza Strip. Estimates of the death toll range from 39 to more than 100. In Israel, outgoing Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Olmert declined to comment on the specific attack, but said Israel can operate near and far. <laughs> We are taking action wherever we can strike terror infrastructure, in places that are nearby and not that close. We are hitting them, and in a way that strengthens deterrence and the image of deterrence. U.S. officials say they believe the alleged weapons could have come from Iran, but haven't offered evidence. Meanwhile, in the Gaza Strip, senior Hamas official Osama al-Mazaini de denied receiving outside weaponry. Hamas does not receive weapons from any country or any other side. To have convoys driving weapons to Hamas is a false statement and comes under the mockery and censorship which Israel always tries to execute. We affirm that Hamas has their own means, which are far from the official and international means, to get weapons. Supporters of Palestinian rights have long criticized Israeli and U.S. indignation at Palestinian efforts to arm themselves when most of Israel's military arsenal is funded and supplied by the United States. 
The Israeli government's released an investigation downplaying the number of civilian deaths in its attack on the Gaza Strip. On Thursday, the Israeli military gave a death toll of 1,166 and said most of the dead were combatants. In Gaza, Khalil Abu Shmal of the Palestinian Center for Human Rights dismissed the Israeli claims. All the international human rights organizations emphasize that Israel committed war crimes against the Palestinians. Israel will try to deceive the people, will try to deceive the international public opinion in order to show that they did not kill this huge number of the civilians during the last aggression on the Gaza Strip. Palestinians say Israel killed more than 1,400 people, most of them civilian. A top U.N. official says the global economic crisis has pushed the number of chronically hungry people past the one billion mark for the first time. Food and agriculture organization head Jacques Duff disclosed the figure to the Financial Times. Last year, the FAO estimated about 960 million people were chronically hungry worldwide. President Obama fielded questions from Internet users nationwide Thursday in the White House's first-ever online town hall. Obama said he expects more job losses during the current recession. We're going to have to be patient and persistent about job creation because uh, I don't think that we've lost all the jobs we're going to lose in this recession. We're still going to be uh, in a difficult time for much of this year. The questions were selected following an online vote. The most popular question asked Obama to comment on whether he thinks legalizing marijuana could help boost the economy. Obama answered no, but didn't rule out legalization outright. White House Press Secretary Robert Gibbs, however, later said Obama opposes legalization. In North Dakota, the town of Fargo is bracing for a potential major flood as the Red River continues to rise. The river currently stands at nearly 40 feet, with predictions it could hit 43 feet by Saturday. Hundreds of volunteers have turned out to help sandbag dikes around the city, which are now as high as 43 feet. Evacuations have already taken place in nearby towns hit by flooding and frozen temperatures. In Pennsylvania, the state Supreme Court has overturned hundreds of juvenile convictions handed down by two corrupt judges who took bribes in return for placing the youths in privately owned jails. Judges Mark Chivarella and Michael Conahan are said to have received $2.6 million for ensuring that juvenile suspects were sent to private prisons. Some of the young people were jailed over the objections of their probation officers. The judges pled guilty to fraud last month and face up to seven years in prison. On Thursday, the Pennsylvania court ruled Chivarella violated the constitutional rights of youth suspects in his courtroom from 2003 to 2008. You can go to our website at democracynow.org to hear two young people describe what it meant to be imprisoned by Chivarella.